Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lived Because He lived I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know what he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold. A newborn baby And feel the pride And joy he gives But greater still The calm assurance This child can face uncertain days Because he lives Because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know oh, oh, he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day. I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's fight, no war with faith. And then this death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I'll know he lives, because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he is. All fear is gone because I know oh, oh, he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in any earthly light. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to my King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love. For blessings which He gives me now, for joys laid up above. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. So when Jesus shows His smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. 
His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, his child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight. Who lovingly guarded my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem. His child and forever I am. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always dear. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his love and care. And though my heart goes weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The time his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. For our special music today, uh, an old song that I just learned, and as soon as I heard this song, I said, oh my goodness, I've got to learn that song and add it to my list. And it's going to be the basis for our message today. Just suppose God searched through heaven and couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed just to buy eternal life for you and me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old road rugged cross. Had it not been 
for a man called Jesus. And then forever my soul would be lost. I'm so glad he was willing to drink his bitter cup. Although he prayed, Father, let it pass from me. And I'm so glad he didn't call 10,000 angels. From my hands, pull oh, these nails that torment me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Then forever my soul would be lost. Had it not been, had it not been for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Had it not been for Jesus, had it not been for a sham trial convicting Jesus, even though Pilate could find no fault in him, had it not been for Pilate sentencing Jesus to death, had it not been for that old rugged cross, had it not been for the Holy Spirit raising Jesus from the dead, had it not been for Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, Romans 8, 33, who will bring any charge against them, those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither the height or depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Had it not been for God so loved the world, none of us would have any hope of having our sins forgiven. None of us would have any hope of being found blameless on the judgment day. None of us would have any hope of eternal life. None of us would have any hope for anything had it not been for God's eternal plan. His plan that has been in place since before time began. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. God had a plan that was a mystery. This plan was destined for our glory. And this plan predated the world 
before time began. God had a plan for our salvation before he created us. And this plan predated the world before time began. Acts 17, 28, For in him we live and move and have our being. Paul discussed the origin of the human race. All nations came from the common ancestor, Adam. Not only were the nations brought forth by God, but he also arranged the years and determined the countries in which the various peoples would dwell. He showered innumerable, innumerable mercies on them in order that they might seek him. He wanted them to grope for him and find him, even though in actuality, God is never far away. It is in the true God that we live and move and have our being. He is not only our creator, but our environment as well. Had it not been for a God that loved us so much, had it not been for Jesus willing to sacrifice himself on the cross, none of us would have any hope any life. We wouldn't have any anything. We'd be pitiful, wandering around hopeless and fearing death. But God did love us before we loved him. God did make a plan before the beginning of time. God did send Jesus to the earth to walk among us for 33 years or so, then to die that cruel death on that old rugged cross. Had it not been for the faithfulness of God, had it not been for the obedience of Jesus, we'd have no hope whatsoever. But the get, good news is, is that we do have hope. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we are born again to a living hope. Those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus, those who have confessed the name of Jesus before men, we have all the blessings that were promised to us, those blessings promised while we're on earth and in the afterlife. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10, that, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Ephesians 2 chapter 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, this not from yourselves, it is a gift from God not of works, so that no one can boast. God's plan for man is beautiful. It's a beautiful plan. And the best part of it is that we don't have to be good enough. And that's a good thing because we could never be good enough. If we had to be good enough, none of us would make it. In our place, Jesus was and is good enough. Our righteousness which is as filthy rags, according to the scriptures, is exchanged for Jesus' righteousness. It's kind of like you had to take a test to get into heaven. And we took the test and we failed miserably. But before we turned our paper in, Jesus took it up and replaced it with his. And we got 100% because Jesus answered all the questions. Jesus did all the work. Jesus did all the heavy lifting. And it's because of him that we pass the test when we go from life into death. And we will reap that eternal reward, not because of anything good we have done, but because of Jesus, because Jesus was willing and obedient and because God loved us so much. But Jesus did everything to deserve it. And such as that is, we have nothing to boast about except to brag about Jesus. And we ought to be doing that.
every day, all day long, every day, bragging about Jesus to one another and to others, to everyone we see, bragging about Jesus, because in him we live and move and have our being. Had it not been, we don't have to worry about had it not been, because it was. Jesus did, in fact, pay the price for all our sins. John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he did lay down his life for us, his sheep. And we have the privilege because of that. We have the privilege of being his sheep. John 10, 3, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. This verse speaks of Jesus' own sheep, <coughs> the sheep who are in Jesus' possession, his own sheep. We follow him because we know his voice. Then he walks ahead of us. Kind of like when I would, was a boy and I'd go feed the cows with my dad. And he had a particular whistle that he did, and boy, those cows would come running. But somebody else could go out there. When we were couldn't go that day, they'd have somebody else go out there, and they'd call the cows, and they wouldn't come because they didn't recognize the voice of the shepherd. Kind of like some folks these days ignore Jesus imploring them to come because they do not recognize his voice. And that's a sad thing because even though Jesus made the way, even though Jesus invites everyone to come to the table, many will not heed his call and they won't enjoy his protection. The worst of all, they won't be with Jesus throughout eternity. They'll be somewhere else in a very bad place, separated from Jesus throughout eternity. Had it not been for Jesus making a way, none of us would have hope of salvation. But sadly, even though Jesus did make a way, not everyone will answer his knock on their door. Everyone will not let Jesus in. We used to sing a song years ago, an invitation song. There's a stranger at the door. Let him in. He has been there off before. Let him in. Let him in ere he is gone. Let him in, the Holy One. Jesus Christ, the Father's Son. Let him in. Open now to him your heart. Let him in. If you wait, he will depart. Let him in. He your soul will sure defend. He will keep you to the end. Let him in. Had it not been, but he did. The verse of the song goes, I'm so glad he was willing to drink his bitter cup. Although he prayed, Father, let it pass from me. And I'm so glad he didn't call 10,000 angels. From my hands pulled these nails that torment me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Psalm chapter 16, verse 5. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. 
my body will also rest secure because you will not abandon me in the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one, faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. We need to be thankful every day for Jesus. We need to be thankful for God so loved the world. Never take for granted the riches and glory afforded us in Jesus. Now this psalm we just read was David speaking to God. Jesus hadn't come around yet. And yet, hundreds of years before Jesus came, look what he said here. You will not let your faithful one see decay. He was talking about Jesus and he probably didn't even know it. Jesus did not see decay. He was raised from the dead before he had time to decay. Never take granted, take for granted the riches and glory afforded us in Jesus. And I'll close with a verse from a beautiful song that we sing. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when strivings cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. Amen. Amen. God is good. Had it not been for what God did, for what Jesus did, we would have no hope. But they did do what was needed for us to reap the benefits, salvation, eternal life. And, and if that was all there was, it'd be enough. But it's more than that. God's taking care of us while we're still here on earth. We like to talk about from cradle to grave <laughs> on, on uh, things. But this, is, this goes past the grave. We're just getting started. We're just barely getting started when we pass from this life into the next. Because eternity's a long time. And this is a long time to be in a wonderful place. And it'd be even a longer time if we weren't in that wonderful place. If we were in a not so wonderful place. I won't even call the name of it. Because right here are these. Y'all have all named the name of Jesus. Your name is etched in stone in that Lamb's book of life. When Jesus returns, he's going to come get us. We need to be in mind. Be mindful of those who haven't put their faith and trust in Jesus and brag about Jesus all the time. Tell them how good Jesus is. Don't tell them how bad they are because we're bad too. Tell them how good Jesus is. Amen? Amen. Amen.